What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I have a crazy story coming from Florida. Casey Anthony. I know a lot of you have heard of Casey Anthony as she's breaking the headlines once again. Casey Anthony popped up in my news feed the other day because she's trying to become a private investigator. For those of y'all who do not know who Casey Anthony is, she was the mother of Kaylee Anthony who was found dead not too far from their house. What in God's name would make her want to become a private investigator? Maybe she can privately investigate her own daughter's death. i never forget this was a very popular case. I was in prison, I believe, when uh, it started getting televised. It got so popular that people were leaving their Universal Florida trip, their vacation trip, just to go to the courthouse and get a little piece of the action. You know, I don't understand some of these stories, they get a lot more hype than others, and it makes me wonder because I read stories like this all the time, right? And uh, there's tons of stories just like these, but they never get any kind of publicity, so I don't understand why this one was so blown up. You know, some cases get like that. But this one had me mad and it still has me mad to this day. For the simple fact that I do not believe anyone is held responsible for this little girl's death. There's a few things that really made me mad in this case. Not only is she freaking lying her ass off to the cops on numerous occasions, but it also took them 31 days to report that little girl missing. 31 days to report a missing child. Ladies and gentlemen, let me read a few things to you really quick. It's been 10 years since Casey Anthony, who was charged in her two-year-old daughter's death, first made national headlines and became the central figure in a criminal trial that captivated the country. The story first broke on July 15, 2008, when Casey's mother, Cindy Anthony, frantically called police in Orlando, Florida to report that she just learned that her granddaughter, Kaylee, was missing. 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> I called a little bit ago, the deputy sheriff, I found out my granddaughter has been taken, she has been missing for a month. We're talking about a three-year-old little girl, my daughter finally admitted that the baby's in the store. Casey Anthony, the mother, told police that Kaylee, the daughter, was with a sitter named Zanny, but that story turned out to be made up. My daughter finally admitted that the baby's in the store. I need to find her. Your daughter admitted that your, the baby is where? But the babysitter took her a month ago. My daughter's been looking for I told you my daughter was missing for a month. I just found her today, but I can't find my granddaughter. And she just admitted to me that she's been trying to find her herself. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today, and it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. Okay, what is the three-year-old's name? In December 2008, Kaylee's decomposed remains were found in a wooded area not far from Anthony's home. Two years later, at a closely watched trial, prosecution alleged that Casey used chloroform on her daughter and suffocated her by putting duct tape over the little girl's mouth and nose. Casey's defense team presented a different theory that Kaylee accidentally drowned in a family's pool. Ultimately, the jury acquitted the young mother of the most serious charges against her. Ladies and gentlemen, this story had me so mad because... The girl was missing for 31 days. That's like unreal to me. How are you not going to report something? Look, one time, uh, the scariest thing of my life that's ever happened to me was my children were gone for about two and a half hours when I was living in this apartment complex, right? My twins. And uh, they were gone for about two and a half hours, right? But it only took about 30 to 40 minutes for us to realize that we couldn't see them or find them. So what did we do immediately? 30, 40 minutes, immediately after noticing that we cannot find them, what did we do? We called the cops. And I must say this, Virginia Beach police officers, they acted with quickness. They had choppers, canines, they had cop cars everywhere looking for my girls. There was at least a dozen officers going door to door throughout the neighborhoods, and finally, they found them. They were in the house with some other kids, you know, but in my eyes, someone done kidnapped them. I just seen a white van leave too. I'm thinking they're in that white van. I'm terrified. I'm a grown ass man fresh out of prison sitting there crying in front of all these stranger ass people. And if I look, they come back. The kids come back. And the officer says to me, don't beat them, man. Don't, I'm, I'm about to dish rag these damn kids. <laughs> but I was so happy to see him, man. God, it was the scariest thing in my life. Thinking that, you know, someone could have taken my babies and done anything with them. Shit's real, man. You gotta keep an eye on your kids. Human trafficking is a very real thing, and they're making millions, billions off of human trafficking. But anyways, the point of the story is I called the police immediately. A convict called the police immediately. 
But you got this clown-ass girl. She ain't no convict. She ain't never been locked up or nothing. Waits 31 days to report that her child was missing. Who does that? That alone should be some sort of prison time. Now, I believe in this case, the main reason why she was found innocent is because they overcharged her. I could be wrong. I'm not an attorney. And there was a lot of shit to play off in this case. But from what I gathered, and maybe someone could uh, help me in the comment section if I'm wrong in any way. But this is how I see it. They overcharged her. They gave her first degree murder and a manslaughter charge. And neither of them fit the bill. They couldn't prove that she... Uh, committed first degree murder and a lot of people wonder what's the difference between first second and third degree murder first degree murder means you planned it okay you planned it premeditated now second degree murder is intentional murder but not premeditated meaning you didn't plan it you didn't expect it to happen but you intentionally killed that person and third degree murder is like manslaughter negligent murder you know uh something you didn't really mean to do you know, but she was charged with first degree murder, meaning that they're trying to prove without a doubt to the jury that she planned to kill her child. Yes, they could prove that they tried to hide the body in some way, shape or form, but they can't prove that she premeditated that murder. And when it comes to the manslaughter charge, I mean, you, there just wasn't enough evidence. So they just charged her with the wrong stuff, I believe. You know, I think they should charge her with something else that they thought they could easily get a conviction for. You know, I've done stories where people have helped the murderer hide the body or get rid of the body, and the people that helped got the same amount of time as the person that murdered the individual. So what bothers me with this story is it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, they can't prove who murdered this child, but at the same time, I mean, they got plenty of evidence that shows that they were trying to hide the body or hide something. All the lies she told her friends and the police, I mean, it's lie after lie after lie. And now this girl wants to become a private investigator. She better be careful because there's probably a lot of people out there that still want a little bit of vengeance for Kaylee. I just can't believe no one did no serious time behind this. It's just one of those cases that make you lose faith in the justice system, man. Because if it was me on that stand, I would have gotten smoked for something. They would have indicted me on something else if they couldn't get me for those charges. They would have figured out something to get me buried in prison. But anyways, let me know in the comments section how you feel about this story, how you feel about her becoming a private investigator. And also let me know in the comments section, all of you Casey Anthony case followers. Let me know if there's any other kind of loopholes that really kept her away from the penitentiary that I didn't mention. Uh, but from what I know, I think they just overcharged her and they just didn't have enough evidence to prove without a doubt to the jury but she took the child's life. So I was going to review a couple videos at the end of this story, but I think I'm going to keep it dedicated to Casey Anthony strictly. And tomorrow or the next day, I'll bring the prison video reviews y'all's way. But uh, until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, notification bell if you enjoyed. As always, check out all the links in the description of the video. Add me up on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. Go buy yourself some Lockdown 23 and 1 merchandise off of Teespring. And y'all be easy, ladies and gentlemen. Salute to every last one you've been supporting me since the beginning. And everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound.